Intro to Analytical Writing The Analytical Writing section consists of two essays, each 30 minutes long for a total of 60 minutes for the section. The first section, Present Your Perspective on an Issue, asks you to discuss the complexities of an issue and take a position on the problem. The second section, Analyze an Argument, asks that you evaluate an argument or critique a line of reasoning. You are not required to agree or disagree with the argument, but you must clearly point out the strengths and weaknesses in the argument no matter what position you take. It's important to note that the analytical writing section is not strictly a test of how well you write. It's a test of how well you can formulate and support an argument. We'll delve into the strategies for both. You will type your essay on the computer using a very basic word processor. The section will start with a tutorial that walks you through how the word processor works. You will be given the option to write your essay on scratch paper provided at the test center, but handwritten essays can take up to six weeks to be scored. There is no break between the two essays, and once you exit either section, you cannot return, even if you finish with time remaining. So make sure that you proofread and edit your essay before moving on. Your issue and argument scores are combined into one average score that is reported to colleges. Although you can view your math and verbal scores at the test center shortly after you complete the test, your writing score will not be available until 10 to 15 days after the test. Each of your two essays will be graded holistically, meaning that the graders base your score on the overall impression of your essay, rather than deducting specific point values for errors. You will receive a score between 0 and 6 for each essay. With the holistic grading method, papers are read quickly and scores assigned based on general impact of the writing on the reader. Papers awarded sixes are considered to be outstanding. Fives are strong, fours are adequate, threes are limited, twos are seriously flawed, and ones are fundamentally deficient. Don't even get me started on zero. Here are the best ways to prepare for the analytical writing section. Keep this in mind as you are preparing. Understand the two writing tasks and how they differ. Know what the evaluators expect to find in top half essays. Anticipate an organizational scheme for each of the two essays. Write out at least one answer for each of the two question types. Let's discuss the basic structure that both essays should follow. The graders will be looking for each essay to follow these guidelines, so make sure you have elements of the following. An introduction. The most important part of your introduction is that it clearly states the thesis of your essay, so the reader knows what the purpose and argument of your essay is. Your introduction should also, in effect, restate the given topic. Your reader should be able to ascertain the issue or argument without having to read the given prompt or topic. Make sure your introduction sparks interest. You've probably heard this a million times when it comes to essay composition, but capture your reader's attention. Hook them in. There are a couple of ways to do this. Begin with a question, a quote, or an anecdote. These are all tried and true methods, and as such, can come off as a cliche. Try thinking of a hypothetical example based on the topic you're discussing, or a true-to-life example that applies to your topic. Vivid descriptions are always a good option. Body paragraphs. The body paragraphs are the paragraphs that include all of the support for your thesis and argument. Each body paragraph has its own structure. You should start each paragraph with a topic sentence, which acts as an introduction to what will be discussed in the paragraph and how it relates to support your thesis. Conclusion. Your conclusion should restate your thesis and then end with a more general statement. Perhaps a warning or a call to action. Think of it as your introduction, but in reverse. Start by restating your thesis and then get broader in your analysis or call to action. If you're running out of time and need to cobble together a conclusion quickly, start with in conclusion, then restate your thesis, then include a quick call to action. Remember, you want your reader to easily recognize that you have included all the necessary elements of an essay, so you don't want them to think of your conclusion as the last body paragraph. Transitions. Remember, your essay will be graded holistically, meaning you need to be very obvious in your points. Transitions help guide your reader through your argument effectively. One word can make a big difference in the reader understanding where you're going with your support and argument. Transitions guide the reader from point A to point B, if your essay is choppy and does not flow well, then there's a potential for the reader who is going through the essay quickly to miss important points on your argument. Transitions to use to show agreement are also, plus, in addition, further, furthermore, moreover, additionally, to add to that, next, in accordance with, accordingly, in agreement, 
Finally, for instance, for example, and so forth, along the lines, undoubtedly. Some transitions that show contrast are, however, in contrast, on the contrary, on the other hand, from a different angle, but, yet, instead, in direct opposition, rather, and although. Transitional words and phrases are helpful not only in linking your ideas between sentences, but also in providing cohesiveness from paragraph to paragraph. Every topic sentence in your body paragraphs should contain some sort of transitional phrase to clue your reader in to how it will connect to the body paragraph that came before and how it fits with your overall argument. So let's take a deeper look at the two different types of essays. 